Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jody Anderson Duquette here with Work Camper News. And if you're not familiar with us, we have been helping great people find great jobs in great places since 1987. And today we're going to learn all about some awesome opportunities in one of everybody's favorite places. Uh, so today we are online with the team from Delaware North and they are seeking to hire work campers for Yellowstone General Stores for their summer season. So during the webinar today, we're going to hear from Chris and Kayla. They've prepared a very thorough presentation for you. So they'll go through some slides on your screen and give you lots of good details. Uh, once we go through the presentation, we will move into a Q&A section. So those of you who are on the live webinar with us, we're happy to take your questions. You can type those in at any point uh, during the presentation. If you're on a desktop or laptop computer, you should have a control panel on your screen with a chat or question section that you can type into. If you're on a smartphone or tablet, on the bottom of your screen, you should have a uh, option to tap on that says questions or chat. You can tap on that, type in whatever your question is, and then tap back to the presentation. We are recording today's webinar. We will have the recording available on the Work Camper News YouTube channel. We will also email it out to everyone who registered. And those of you who do get that email with the link, um, if you have other Work Camper friends that you think may enjoy this opportunity, please feel free to forward that email to them so they can check out all the details as well. Well, I'm really looking forward to hearing all of the great information and things that have changed for the 2024 season. Uh, Delaware North has been a, a long time uh, hirer of work campers, and uh, they've really developed a program that most work campers really enjoy and gives them a great summer experience. So uh, without further ado, I'm excited to turn things over to Chris and Kayla. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Great, thanks so much, Jody, and it's great to be here as well. Uh, I'm Chris Wade, I'm staffing manager in West Yellowstone, based in West Yellowstone for Yellow Yellowstone General Stores, and I'm here with Kayla. Kayla, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Kayla Clark. I am a senior recruiter with Delaware North. I'm actually based out of Buffalo, New York, so I'm nowhere near Montana and um, Wyoming, but I've been helping Chris with everything for uh, Yellowstone General Stores and excited to uh, answer any questions for you guys. Okay, brilliant. And, you know, kind of the point of this presentation is just give you an overview of what we do here uh, with Yellow Yellowstone General Stores and what it's like to work and live in Yellowstone National Park. Uh, we will have, uh, during this end of this presentation, we will have a QA and a uh, segment. So, uh, we'll definitely be answering all your questions. And without further ado, uh, I believe we have a video. Is that right, Jody? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Go ahead and play that if you're ready. All right. So hopefully it works. <laughs> May the technology gods be with us. <laughs> And if not, attendees, if the video doesn't quite play for you on the screen, we will have a link to this video available to you in that email we'll send out later. Okay, it's thinking, so. All right. Yep, it's coming up for me, Chris. All right. Welcome to Yellowstone. All right. See what happens here. <laughs> Everything's great. The hot springs are great. The geysers are cool. But the mountains, the mountains just stand out to me. That looks so exciting. And I, I saw some uh, international people talking about how they love working in the country. And then they interviewed somebody my age who said, I love working for Yellowstone General Stores because I get to work with people from all over the world. I was like, that's where I want to work. Living right here on the geyser basin, obviously geysers are quite a passion of mine. It's great living somewhere where I, I'm woken up, not by sirens, but by beehive in the middle of the night. So that's awesome. 
I think that canyon would be my favorite spot so far in the park. It's just breathtaking. It takes us like 10 minutes to get there. So sometimes we just go there on our breaks, which is great. Grand Prismatic. Grand, the Grand Prismatic. That is, without a doubt, breathtaking and awe-inspiring, you know. Actually, I love Canyon, the best one, because we can like hike to different places, like at the upper fall and the lower fall, and there are so many trails we can hike. And the Canyon is very gorgeous, but yeah. I just keep coming here for the hiking and nature, and most of them is for the people I know right here. You're gonna meet people from everywhere, different countries, different states, who've all been through different things, so you'll hear different cool stories. And I like the dorm, like it's clean and we have a roommate, but not so many roommates, yeah. I like our RV site. Yeah. <laughs> and an RV site's that's, really good. That's worth the commitment. <laughs> and in this particular campground, as you can see, we have room between us. So we have our privacy, we have our quiet. By all means, you can bring your pets with you, living here in the RV park. I'm amassing this amazing photography collection of all the, we just saw baby bighorns the other day, which was crazy. Last night we saw a grizzly and a cub. It, it, it's just, it's never ending amazement. Um, if you like to the nature, and you definitely have to come to Yellowstone because you can see so many beautiful things just by walking maybe five minutes. Oh gosh, well I love both Lamar and Hayden Valleys. You know, just first, they're just so beautiful and expansive and you know, the views are fabulous. Three years ago, my sister came here and also she was a cashier working in Canyon Village and she told me a lot of things about Yellowstone and that made me really uh, want to come here and then like uh, three years later like my classmate also want to like uh, get a work in USA and so we decided to come to Yellowstone to work together and I think that's a very great decision we made yeah right whenever I'm telling people if I'm trying to get them interested one of the one of the true questions I'll ask them how would you like me to pay you to live and work in Yellowstone yeah. you know <laughs> and a lot of people were like Oh, so you're volunteers. I'm like, no, this is an actual job. It's five days a week. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. an actual job. It's a paid position. But it's nothing like any job I've ever had in my life. It's not a job. We get to play and live in Yellowstone and get paid. <laughs> I love it. Like, everything is, like, well organized. Yeah, we, like, hang out a lot. There's always, like, a bunch of us, like, hiking together. Just, there's such a diversity since there's so many people working here, you have an opportunity to meet a great diversity of people from all over the world. And uh, so a community definitely builds there. And if you're just walking around the geyser basin sitting and waiting for a geyser, it's amazing how many people you, you get to meet just doing that. It's a great place to, to just have a break from your life and enjoy something different. Um, and just be prepared to work hard, but to have lots of fun while working and on your days off. Work hard, play hard, and that's what we do. Oh, that was awesome. That's such a great video. Everybody ready to sign up now? I am. <laughs> I'm back. Can you hear me? We're back, Chris. Yep. All right. I, I'm excited just by that video as well. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Just getting the screen back here. Yep. I see your PowerPoint. It's looking good. All right. One second. All right. So, uh, getting back into the presentation, so you know why why work in Yellowstone? It's one of the most beautiful places, you know, on this earth, and you're in the middle of you know Wyoming, uh, bordering Montana and Idaho as well. Uh, but if you love the outdoors, this is the place to be. Uh, you know, as you can see from uh, the the screen, you know, you've got the the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone in the upper left. You've got black bears. You've got bison. You know, wolves, uh, all types of you know wildlife here, is, you know, including elk and deer. Uh, you, you know, you're surrounded by volcanic activity uh, with all the all the geysers, and and you have hiking. You have thousands of acres of trails to hike around as well. 
In fact, yesterday I was looking outside my window here in West Yellowstone and saw like a herd of elk walking through. So that's that's what you see here on a daily basis. Uh, and I think just to work and play in this environment is incredible. And then next we have, uh, what we cover here today is, uh, we go over a few things, a bit about Delaware North, the company, uh, the Yellowstone, Yellowstone general stores that we operate within the park, uh, you know, what it's like to be an associate and to live, work and play here. And then, you know, at the end, you know, how to apply and how to, you know, make this, you know, make this conversation a reality. So next one we have, uh, this is where Kayla, if you would like, you can join in and uh, just go over uh, the slide. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So um, Delaware North is a global, lead, global leader in hospitality and food service. <clears throat> and as you can see from this slide, um, we operate in uh, many different outlets, uh, lodging, sporting, airports, travel, gaming, restaurants. Um, in many different entertainment industries. Uh, we have a variety of different subsidiaries that we provide uh, different industry services. Um, and here at Yellowstone, we are in our parks and resorts subsidiary with Delaware North. Um, in addition to Yellowstone, um, Delaware North provides recreational guest service in some of the most beautiful places around the country, um, some including Sequoia, um, Kings Canyon, Grand Canyon, um, Shenandoah National Park in Virginia, uh, Niagara Falls State Park over in New York. Um, we also have Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. Uh, so we have many different outlets that we um, provide the entertainment and hospitality to. Great, thank you so much. Yeah. All right, so what we do here, kind of the basics is we, we operate, uh, as you can tell, general stores in the Yellowstone area. There, there is 11 of them. And recently, uh, Delaware North signed a 15-year contract, renewing the contract with the National Park Service. Uh, so we operate and manage these uh, throughout the spring, summer, and fall seasons. Uh, and then, you, as you can see, uh, the upper left is uh, the lake lake area. Then we have to your right, upper right is tower, mm -hmm. and then below we have canyon, and followed by uh, Yellowstone. So, you know, again, these are you know fairly rustic, uh, but as far as the amenities go, uh, within the stores, we have you know it's the typical general store um, kind of features. We have a you know full array of gifts, apparel, groceries, sundries, you know, camping supplies, jewelry, and food services. And the food services, you can sit down and have, have a hamburger, have a hot dog, and a soda, as well as some you know local ice cream as well. Uh, our stores they operate they vary as, as far as operations go based on. Uh, Usually, it's typically based on the snow levels and when the snow melts, as well as the visitation as visitation increases and and tourists arrive, uh, we open more and more stores. Uh, we have a variety of dates available for hiring throughout that period. The the longer the better. You, we look at a two a two month minimum typically, uh, but tell us you know when you're available, and we're definitely trying. You know, make it work on our end and you know see what the best fit is uh, and as far as the team goes uh, you know, we have again some very enthusiastic diverse hard-working associates of all ages and backgrounds and you know they have a shared goal of providing a, you know exceptional guest service uh, as you can see here this is our employee dining area and uh, some of our you know, our team and they come from all walks of life and areas of the world. We have you know retirees, college students, international students, uh, and everything in between, you know, all working and living together within Yellowstone National Park. 
and Yellowstone National Park itself has, you know, between four and five million visitors a year coming from all over the world. And, you know, it's our, our duty to, you know, to basically provide exact, you know, exceptional memories for each and every one of them that we encounter. Uh, this is a retail environment, so you do, it is extremely busy, uh, but, you know, everyone considers this a trade-off to live in Yellowstone for three or four months, uh, you know, during, during the season. Um, and then about living in Yellowstone, and, you know, we're talking to the work campers here, so obviously the majority of you will have RVs, and our associates live or live on or near the work locations that you are associated with. Most RV sites are within within walking distance to the store, a few a little, a little further, and those could be discussed during the interview. Uh, site assignments for these RV areas are made by management and are based on kind of the specs of your RV. Our RV sites you can accommodate up to up to close to 45 feet long, depending on the RV overhang. Uh, per the MPS, uh, tiny homes uh, living in your car are not allowed uh, in the RV park area. Uh, and again, these RV sites are not fancy, but they're adequate and definitely will provide the basic needs. And then one second here. Are you there, Jody? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry. I thought I'd, I thought I lost you. Sorry. And then, as far as the locations go, RV sites are rustic. Uh, they're mostly gravel and dirt, uh, with very few paved areas. Uh, the RV sites themselves, they you know they include site water, sewer, and electric. Uh, the propane available at Fishing Bridge and Grant uh, service areas, and as well as Lake Employee RV Park has in-ground propane and, and uh, kind of associates assigned to the to the park that will have it metered and billed monthly. Uh, some of these RV parks uh, do have comfort stations, which have separate shower, toilet, and coin laundry rooms. And just tell us, you know, if you, you know, when you get to go through these conversations with us, whether or not your RV is con self-contained or you will need a site with a comfort station. Uh, then what I touched upon, again, living out of a car or with a tent is not permitted. Uh, vampic cans, camper vans, and build-out vans are not permitted through the, uh, the National Park Service uh, based on their regulations as well as uh, truck toppers and SUV build-outs uh, are not allowed within the RV employee areas. Uh, pets, you're allowed two pets per RV. Uh, they need to be on a leash, uh, no longer than six feet uh, long. Uh, they can't be tied out, so you always have to be present uh, you know, with the pet at all times, even when you go to use the bathroom. Uh, Pets, you know, again, cannot be left unattended. Uh, this is, you know, we've got bears, wolves, lions, and tigers in this area. Uh, maybe not tigers, but, you know, again, <laughs> you know. Good one. Yeah. Definitely, you know, definitely, you know, make sure your, your pets, you know, in an enclosed area when you, when you do leave. Um, then as far as, uh, Pets, Roman, uh, definitely every, you know, all pets have to be on the leash. Uh, they're allowed within the RV park area and some of the block, black top roads. Uh, coolers themselves, you know, again, bear country. So, you know, everything needs to be in an enclosed area uh, when you leave or when you go to bed, as well as trash cannot be left outside and has to be put in a, a you know, bear proof container. Uh, and as far as our stores go, all of our stores provide a meal plan. 
uh, that is optional for RV, RVers. Uh, it's around $70 a week. Uh, this meal plan offers you know three meals a day, seven days a week uh, per person. This charge, you know, the charge is payroll deducted, and 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 again is optional, you know, based on the the needs of the, the RVer. The and the dining room is located either at the store or in the dorm area, so it's typically within walking distance of the RV sites. Right. And living in Yellowstone, so technology. Um, as far as technology goes, it's I would say it's not antiquated, but it's definitely like going back in time several years. So you know we do have internet and cell reception there. It's limited in most of the areas and not always available. Uh, you know our dorms do have you know Wi-Fi and do have a computer with internet access uh, but again it's you know is it, it is and can be spotty Verizon is probably the the best provider in the park uh, I have Verizon myself as well as AT&T and it it depends on you know what area of the park work, works best but I think overall Verizon is probably your go-to um, as far as satellite goes for the our you know for you know, getting satellite satellite uh, feeds. Uh, most individuals do use Starlink, and uh, from what I've heard, it's probably the best provider right now. And it has you know some strong uplink and downlink capabilities. Uh, you know, kind of again based on where you are, and you know as far as any trees or mountains in the way. Uh, Mel, in most kind of park villages, have you know a seasonal kind of post office. So you can forward your mail to these stores, and but forwarded forwarded it from these PO boxes is, is not permitted. And we re recommend if you transfer your mail, you do it on a temporary basis with a start start and end date. So don't permanently transfer your mail to the mailbox. Uh, we and we do receive you know you are, are able to receive Amazon packages, your Prime packages, uh, you know through our warehouse, and they will distribute them on a daily basis uh, to where you to your location uh, as far as uh, clinic services uh, we have STGI which provides the basic kind of clinical services uh, and that's seven seven dollars and ninety cents per week uh, it's not insurance but it's intended to provide kind of operating funds to make the medical services available in the three you know kind of park clinics uh, other insurance is primary but you know associates receive discounts on any clinic services uh, Yellowstone is remote so if you do have any you know complicated medical services uh, the hospitals in the surrounding towns would be the best place to go um, and as far as groceries go uh, we have the basic grocery items in our general stores. You know, associates receive 30% off. Uh, although, usually, for your major grocery runs, it would be going to either West Yellowstone, Cody in Wyoming, Bozeman, Jackson, or Idaho Falls, which are between you know two to three hour kind of trips. You know, based on your location in Yellowstone, and you know those. Those areas do, you know, have your typical Costco's, Walmart's, and you know other kind of camping needs or automotive automotive needs, if such arises. Uh, pharmacies, uh, we would recommend uh, you sending them through mail order. Uh, that's the easiest way to you, uh, because the nearest pharmacies are with, you know, in again Cody, Bozeman, or West Yellowstone. So it's quite the trip to uh, to the pharmacies. Uh, fuel itself, uh, diesel, propane, and gasoline are available in the surrounding communities and some of the park locations. An employee uh, park area LEVR is the only park with underground uh, liquid propane hookups uh, for our associates. And as far as associates with motorhomes that have internal propane tanks, you can set up an account 
uh, and delivery by Amerigas, which is based out of Gardner. Uh, they can deliver to the RVs with portable tanks, but they can rent a large external tank that can receive kind of route deliveries. And Grant and Fish and Bridge gas stations are the only stations within the park with liquid propane. And next section, uniforms. So we like to keep everything casual here. Um, uh, typically, you know, you are working in a re retail facility, and so we try and keep everyone as comfortable as pop, pop possible. Uh, associates will wear, you know, will wear a blue jean in good condition and the appropriate shoes that are neutral and you know cover your entire foot. Uh, most of the employees you know wear sneakers or hiking shoes again something which is comfortable since you will be you know standing for you know long periods of time uh, we provide everything else uh, you know as far as the shirt goes and aprons and you know our appearance is you know you know conservative and you know earrings are allowed uh, typically you know, two per ear and no other visible piercings and as far as store services go, we are open seven days a week. Uh, most of the positions, you know, are, you know, have five-day work weeks. Uh, we, you know, request that it's a 32-week minimum, a 32-hour minimum to 40 hours per week, and those schedules are set by the store manager with two days off uh, in succession. Uh, and then the spouse, you know, so your spouses, friends, and companions that you know come by, uh, we you know we definitely accommodate them in the RV parks as well. Uh, just you know, just let us know and you know, treat your RV like a home. Uh, the wages, as far as our wages go, uh, our wage currently is fifteen dollars an hour, and that's a non-tip position. You know, some positions will have, you know you know an increase in pay kind of based on physicality and you know increase you know kind of you know more job duties uh, as far as being paid uh, you are paid weekly on fridays and that can be either a, a physical check or it could be direct deposit and uh, you will be working out of, if you are in the national park uh, you are, will be working in wyoming so there will be no state tax uh, if you are working in West Yellowstone, that's Montana, and there will be Montana tax withholdings. And as far as your housing, meals, and health program costs, those are all payroll deducted out of your paycheck when you receive it. Anything else, Kayla, to add that I've missed so far? Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I was just wondering, is there anything else you'd like to add? That... Uh, nope, uh, that's uh, everything there. Um, I can add a few things for the um, the slide that we're on, but um, do you want me to work on this slide or do you have it? No, I, I got it. Okay. All right, so next, uh, you know, our jobs are you know, primarily retail and food, food service positions. Uh, they, you know, include custodial, warehouse, receiving associates, uh, auditors, and employee dining room staff as well. Uh, so, you know, as far as the retail goes, you know, you're, they, that can include cashiers, it can include stocking, it can include, uh, you know, cooks, uh, grill cooks, as well as, you know, servers as well within our restaurant areas. Uh, you know, as far as what we're looking for, uh, we're looking for you know just the flexibility and willingness to work as a team member. You know, it is physical, so you will be, you know, standing for you know long periods of time, bending and you know, carrying up to thirty pounds, maybe fifty pounds occasionally. You know, when you're stocking uh, the stores, uh, one thing also to take into consideration is you're at high altitude, so you know, uh, this is depending on the store you're between six and eight thousand feet so you're you know you're 20 percent less oxygen here 
And so, you know, definitely consult with your doctor if, you know, if you are able to do this work. Um, as far as, you know, what we look for, you know, through the interview process, you know, all the National Park Service and, you know, associates must pass a pre-employment background check. And uh, we can definitely go over, you know, the more details of that in, you know, during the interview process. All right, so now the fun stuff. Uh, what to do in Yellowstone, you know, with your time off. Uh, there's an abundance of, you know, hiking and fishing, camping, you know, wildlife viewing, uh, biking that you can do on your days off. Uh, there's, you know, countless miles of hiking trails. Uh, you know, you can make a trip down to Grand Tetons, which has the national park to the south of us uh, that has, you know, equally amazing views and, you know, hiking trails and biking as well. And, uh, you know, visit Jackson itself, which is a, a quaint little mountain town and country town. Uh, we do have a co-op area and recreational program too, which is a free service to employ employees as they, you know, as they kind of offer trips around the park, they lead hikes uh, and backpack, backpacking trips and then do you know, things such as rafting trips, sporting events, talent shows, photo contests, and more. And with within the National Park Service, uh, there's interpretive programs that are offered by the Park Service that include, you know, presentations, ranger walks and talks, you know, visitor center, uh, museum visits, which are typically, you know, free of charge. Although every once in a while, there will be a cost associated with that. So what are the benefits of, you know, working in Yellowstone? Uh, benefits, you know, obviously you, you wake up every morning and go to sleep uh, within Yellowstone. So that's an incredible experience that not everyone, you know, will ever receive. Uh, we do provide a discount, a 30% discount, discount on all gifts, apparel and grocery items. Uh, we're not, that does not include the alcohol, tobacco or batteries or camera equipment. And then, once or twice a year, we will have 50% uh, off days where, you know, we put off, you know, put everything on sale for the employees at a 50% off discount. And then as far as entry to Yellowstone National Park and Grand Teton, Grand Teton National Park, uh, those are free of charge and you can come and go as you please. And we also, you know, strive and, you know, take serious, you know, seriousness and being a green company. So we definitely do what we can to, you know, make what we do and how we get rid of uh, waste in a very efficient manner and keep it, you know, highly green. And then lastly, you know, we offer, a, you know, a completion bonus. So if you, if you finish your assigned uh, time here, with, you know, with Yellowstone uh, General Stores, we provide a completion bonus at the end of your contract. And then more most importantly, you know, how do you apply? So this is how you apply. You could go to dn.careers forward slash YGS to see all our positions, as well as uh, ygsjobs.com and my contact information and Kayla's contact information is in this slide. So feel free to reach out to us with any questions as you go through this uh, process with us. So thank you very much. And Jody, back to you. <laughs> awesome. Well, good job, Chris and Kayla. That was a good overview of things. Uh, we can definitely get into some more details. I know um, those of you out there have already uh, submitted some questions in, and that's awesome. Uh, so those who are online, if you do have more questions or uh, would like anything repeated, please go ahead and, and type anything in. Uh, so if you're on a desktop or laptop computer, you should have a GoToWebinar control panel with a section where you can type things in. If you are on a tablet or a smartphone, uh, you should have a questions option to tap on there on the bottom of your screen. Uh, I'll try to uh, group questions so we're not jumping around on topics too much, uh, but we'll, we'll do our best here to uh, cover a lot of things. So 
All right, first, um, let's dig back into um, the RV sites and housing. Um, so Chris, if you wouldn't mind um, talking again just about um, RV sites, I know there are some questions about um, RV types. Uh, you mentioned, you know, you can accommodate up to about 45 feet or so, uh, but as far as types of RVs goes, uh, do folks need to have an, a hard-sided RV just for safety and everything? Correct, yes. Thanks for bringing that up, Jody. Uh, yes, uh, being that we are in bear country, uh, hard-sided hard is uh, mandatory. Sure, sure. Okay, perfect. And um, so even if it's a class B RV, uh, then that's okay because it's it should still be hard sided as well, the van style. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So um, it's if folks don't have like say they're in a hard sided RV, but maybe they don't have um, toilet facility, shower facility, sink facility in their RV. You said you guys have comfort stations at some of the parks. So the work camper just needs to let you know that. So they're, they'll be placed in one of those RV areas with the comfort stations. That's correct. Yeah. As you go through the, you know, conversations with us, uh, definitely bring that up and, you know, based on your requirements, we can, uh, you know, identify the best location and store for you for your particular RV or camper. Super. Okay, awesome. And for folks who are traveling, uh, maybe as a family, uh, do you guys accept families there? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, as long as they're within, you know, your RV, uh, we definitely, you know, uh, will, you know, we're open to family members. And sure. you know, if they're if they're over eighteen, uh, you know, they could, you know, they could definitely work in one of our stores too. Awesome. Okay, very cool. And typically, um, if it's, uh, you know, two parents living together, they would be able to work with the manager at their location to potentially get like alternating schedules. So that way, a parent is always available to be home with maybe younger kids. Yes, definitely. Just, you know, again, work with your store manager, uh, you know, on your kind of your needs and, you know, they can definitely accommodate that. And I'm, and I'm sure they're, I'm sure within the you know the, the campgrounds, I'm sure there's some babysitters out there who would love to extra money too. Oh, for sure, for sure, um, awesome. And if there are folks, maybe uh, it is two folks traveling together, but only one of those persons um, is available to work for Delaware North. It, is that a possibility you guys would consider? Uh, yes, it's, it's definitely a possibility. We prefer to. Uh, but again, you know, I think work with myself or Kayla and we can, you know, work, you know, can discuss that on a case by case basis. Sure. Is there an extra charge at all for folks if there are two people in the RV, but only one of them's working for you guys? Does that affect the cost of the RV site at all? No, it's a flat fee of $75 per okay. unit. Okay, super. Alrighty. And you said, um, as far as the utilities go, um, is the cost of electric, is that included with the weekly cost of the RV site or is that billed separately? That is all incorporated into those $75 now. Okay, super. All right. It would just be, um, you mentioned a couple of the locations had the in-ground propane hookups. That would be an additional cost at the locations that have that? Correct. Yeah, that's exclusive. Yeah, exclusive of that cost. Awesome. Okay. Um, is there any Wi-Fi available in the RV site areas? There is not. No. Um, there. Just in the I mean, dorm just in the dorm area, typically, and within the store. Uh, you know, I think you would have to rely on your Starlink for any internet if you are within the RV area itself or possibly use a you know a hotspot as well through your through your carrier. Yeah. And I and I bet that's going to fluctuate as well just my, from personal experience being there in the park. Um, you know, 
probably during the busier times of day, especially, or busier times of year when there are more people in the park, there are more people there, everybody's using their smartphones to try to take pictures and post them on social media and all that stuff. So I'm sure the the connectivity of the cellular kind of ebbs and flows with the amount of people that are in there trying to use it. Yes, no, I think you hit that. I mean, it depends, you know, like anywhere, you know, when you're traveling, it depends on the volume of people trying to use the same service and how much how much data you know can actually be pushed through so it you know, it can fluctuate and you know it, you know it is sometimes based on the location that you are within the park as well too yeah for sure for sure okay cool uh, all right, uh, lots of good questions here coming in, you guys. Um, Chris, let's talk a little bit about uh, the dormitories. Uh, we, we didn't get into that too much yet. I know there are some uh, work campers out there who maybe don't have RVs or maybe don't have you know, a hard-sided vehicle. Um, so uh, could you tell us a little bit more about uh, the dorms and kind of what that's like and just hit on the cost of that again, please? Sure. Uh, each you know, each uh, of our 11 stores has a, a dorm associated and close, but, you know, basically, a, you know, walking distance from the actual store. Uh, these are, you know, fairly rustic, you know, two, you know, two beds per per room. Uh, they have a shared, a shared bathroom as well for the floor and divide the floors are divided up, you know, uh, separated by men and women. Uh, you know, we do our best to uh, to uh, have a dorm mate with you that's either your partner or a friend uh, and do what we can to kind of put everyone together and, you know, in the same area. Uh, and, you know, as far as, you know, they, they are rustic, they're, you know, they're, they're fairly small and self-contained, uh, but, you know, they, they're definitely, you know, if you're looking for maybe the four seasons, it's probably not the best place to be. <laughs> sure, absolutely. But it's you know th you know it's a you know I, I, it has all the needs that you have, and you have an employee dining room area uh, down below that you can you know that we do have those those three meals per day there, as well as you know you again your you know your walking distance uh, to the retail store to you know. To get any groceries or other items uh, one thing that we don't you know we don't have within each dorm area or do, dorm room is you're not allowed you know anything electrical within there uh you know as far as hot you know hot stoves or uh microwaves that you bring or uh you know coffee pots it's just you know uh we have limited electricity and they're fairly antiquated some of these uh dorm areas so they you know they can't for you know, for fire purposes and based on uh, national park service uh, permits, we're not allowed uh, anything beyond what's in the in the dorm room currently. Okay, okay. So by that, do you mostly specifically mean like things that would heat up stuff? Like they would be able to like plug in and charge their cell phones or their laptops or run a CPAP machine at night or something like that. Yes, that's exactly okay. what was, you know, more the, you know, the, you know, the, the higher the voltage. Is the hot yeah. or the high voltage, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, that, you know, could potentially cause a fire or something electrical to you know, go wrong. Totally. Okay, that makes sense. And when folks are living in the dorms, um, is it a requirement that they're on the meal plan? Uh, yes. Uh, and, and again, the meal plan is... Uh, you know, three meals a day, seven days a week, and but they are required, yes. And the, you know, if you are in RV, uh, you you have the option of signing up for that meal plan as well. Super. Or you, or you could, you know, if you are in the RV plan, uh, you do have the option of just having a lunch only uh, plan, which I think runs about thirty-five dollars a week. Cool. Okay. All right. So just a little supplement there. That's awesome. Um, can you um, go on and off the meal plan as you want? Like if you want to have it for a couple weeks and then not have it for a couple weeks, can you kind of turn it on and off as you go? That's a good question. Uh, 
I don't know the answer to that, but I can definitely, you know, get that to you and to, you know, to the audience listening. Sure. I know in the past, um, I believe our viewers are able to um, like sign up for it once and then and then cancel it once. Um, so I my my guess is it's going to be no, you can't just turn it on and off as, as you want to. But I think you could try it. And if decided it wasn't for you, you could cancel it. But again, um, if that's a question that is important to you guys, definitely bring that up um, in the interview process as well. So and okay um so what was the cost on the meal plan again chris oh the meal plan was 70 dollars for the full meal plan and okay. if you're within you know and the rv only lunch plan is 35. okay per person per week and that was a payroll deduction so that would just come on their paycheck yes okay awesome all right i think that's all the questions about the meal plan and, and for them as far as the meals go um are they able to accommodate you know um restrictions allergies etc like is there kind of some variation it maybe somebody's a vegan or something like that is is there options available for folks uh we definitely you know you know definitely you know bring that up to you know the chef and cooks you know if you do have you know allergies and we're you know we do our best to work with you uh the way it is set up you know within the dining areas you know we typically have one protein a starch and vegetable uh you know during the dinner and lunch air time time frame uh we do have you know a, a small salad bar as well so you know if, if you are, are vegetarian uh, we will have that and the you know the cooks and chefs do their best to have a you know vegetarian uh kind of item on the menu as well mm -hmm. awesome okay very cool um and a couple folks uh, asked this question it's a good question uh so they, if there are two folks in the rv uh, but only one of the two are working is it possible for the non-working partner to also pay and be on the meal plan uh, that I uh, know uh, you need to be working uh, within uh, Yellowstone General Stores to be part of the meal plan. Okay, alrighty, that makes sense. Okay, awesome. All right, I think we've covered all of our questions on the meal plan so far. Okay, so a couple more questions here about RV sites. Um, as far as electricity goes, is it 30 amp or 50 amp? That is a question that I do not know the answer to. Um, Kayla, would you know that by chance? I do not, unfortunately. I know um, this year is the first time that electricity is included with the plan. So uh, this is a little new, so I'm not sure. Sure. Again, we can find, you know, I can relay the information to you and then uh, we can get the answer. Sure, you bet. Yeah. And I, I think in the past it was discussed. I think there is 50 amp maybe at some locations. Um, so if you are a rig that is 50 amp, you definitely want to make sure to bring that up. Um, so if there is any kind of limitations on amperage that that um, you, the work camper, are being placed in the, the right place to accommodate your rig. Uh, let's see. Good questions, though, everybody. Oh, and uh, just a quick clarification, Chris. Uh, the $75 per site, is that per person or for the RV site entirely, no matter how many people it uh, is? Correct. Uh, just for the site entirely. So whether it be one person or four people, it's by, you know, by the RV. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Alrighty, are folks allowed um, to have electric bicycles? Are they allowed in the campsites or to be ridden to and from the stores for work shifts? I believe they are. Uh, and again, I, I think you know we we abide by the by the you know you know the National Park Services rules. Uh, I don't know exactly the answer to that, but. That's another one I'll, I'll get back to you on. <laughs> sure. Okie dokie. 
Um, all right, a couple questions here came in about the dorms. Uh, for the dormitories, are there any solo rooms? Uh, they, at times there could be. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, we we definitely try and accommodate you. Uh, but you know, if we are fully staffed, then you know those rooms will you will have a roommate. Uh, but we definitely will work 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 with you. And you know, if some of the more you know remote locations, you might have a better opportunity to be in solo. Okay, cool. And if uh, folks are coming as a couple, uh, would they be able to have the same room? Or would um, that they would yeah, that would definitely be our preference. Uh, you know, and we're we're definitely you know. It depends on when you you know what part of the season you come in as well. So you know the earlier you arrive, the better opportunity you would have to uh, you know to be uh, partnered together in the same room. Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. And just to clarify, the RV sites have electric, water, and sewer hookups, so they are full hookups. And Correct. Okay, uh, here's another question. Uh, we may or may not know this one. We might have to contact the National Park Service, see what your guys is. Um, Cause you guys, they lease the RV sites from the National Park Service. So sometimes, well, you know, Delaware North might not have a problem with something. The National Park Service has guidelines that Delaware North has to follow. So uh, Chris, here's the question at hand. Uh, this couple owns a mobile RV repair business. Um, if, uh, so one of the couple wants to uh, work for Delaware North. The other wants to run his mobile RV repair business. Do you know if there would be any issue with him running his business while they're there in the park? Would the RV business be within the park itself, the repair business? That. I guess that would be up to um, that technician, whether he, I assume he would be happy to take calls that were close by and there in the park. He might go outside the park, I'm not sure, but I know operating a business inside the federal land is a whole other kettle of worms. You have to get permits from the park service and all that kind of fun stuff. Am I kind of dancing in the right realm there? I believe so, yes. So I think, you know, as far as operating a, a business such as as you mentioned, I think it would definitely be more acceptable and permitted, you know, outside of the the boundaries of the park. So if you're working in, if you had that service within West Yellowstone, I I think that would be, you know, fine. Whereas within the park, again, as you mentioned, you know, that's you know infringing upon the National Park Service's guidelines and regulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, oh, let's see. Okay. Let's get into um, talking about. Uh, okay. Let's let's get into talking about hours and and shifts and things like that. So, okay. Um, can lots of questions here. Uh, can couples work together? Do they get the same schedule? Can they get the same days off? Uh. They definitely can work together. You know, they'll probably be in different areas of, you know, of the store. You know, one might be doing cashiering, one might be doing stocking, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, we, you know, it's our intent to keep everyone happy and you know on the same, you know, uh, working in the you know, basically the same shifts at the same same time, so you get the same same days off. So again, that's a conversation and with our store managers and, but that's, you know, we've done that in the past and we will continue to do that because, you know, we want you to, you know, everyone who joins us to, you know, to experience Yellowstone uh, with, you know, with the same days off so they can experience it together. For sure, for sure. Okay, perfect. And typically, what are the hours of the stores? Uh, typically, it's, it's varying from store to store, but typically, you know, it's you know around eight o'clock to kind of you know open up the store until eight 
8.30, dependent on the store itself. You know, some close earlier, depending if they're more remote. Uh, but typically between, you know, I would say open in hours are between 9, 9 and say 8 p.m., maybe slightly more uh, in Old Faithful area. Sure, sure, more po more popular area. Okay, right. and typically, um, are there split shifts available, or is it kind of one block, or you know, what what's the schedule kind of look like? Uh, we the store managers will do one block uh, as far as uh, shifts go. You know, there are you know every once in a while there might be a need for a split shift, but that's usually you know that can be a, a conversation topic with the store manager you know based on need but typically you know we prefer the, the one block of eight hours okay and, and, you and are, is, do, sorry i was just gonna say you know it is you know five days a week with two days off typically okay awesome and in that eight hour shift um, are there any break times available like for example if the work campers maybe have um, dogs that would need to be relieved on a, a lunch break or maybe another so what's the breaks what are the breaks like uh and you know it's based on you know the state and fed and federal laws uh it's a 30 minute uh lunch break with you know and i and there's i think a 10 or 52 two 10 minute breaks as well uh throughout the day okay awesome and, and again, if I, you know sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, was gonna, I was just gonna say you know sometimes you know it's the relation relationships you build with you know the rv crowd around you and folks within the store uh, that you know the associates that you get to get to meet and maybe you know you could have one of them you know walk your dog if you know if that's you know if that's a concern for you so there's always people you know willing to help out there awesome chris that was exactly what i was going to say so good job <laughs> All right. Um, some folks are wondering if there are any part-time positions available working less than 32 hours a week, or would it be possible for two people to both work a combined 32 hours per week? Uh, just based on so many move-in parts and complexity, uh, we, you know, the minimum is 32 hours a week and up to 40 and as far as you're know, combining two people for you know one 40 hour shift uh uh that's no yeah okay all righty okay uh let's see so um if you wouldn't mind kind of hitting on um the season again like when you're looking for folks to start and end sure and it's a role in the you know that we've got 11 stores and based on you know the the traffic and you know the you know the need of different areas in the park and you know kind of snow levels and when the snow melts uh we typically the first couple of stores open up in uh, mid April and you know sl everything's usually all 11 stores are up and running by you know by mid June and then close in you know start of you know start in uh, labor day all the way uh last store you know is typically closed by uh mid mid october mm -hmm. so we're looking for individuals you know both opening stores as well as closing stores during the season so we can stagger those accordingly and uh, we you know typically again mention you know as far as what we require it's you know minimum of two months but sometimes you know, people might split it up where they might stay for two months, you know, you know, then travel for a month and then come back uh, for another two months. So that's another option as well. 
Very cool. Okay. So yeah, these are just some of the details. Um, some of you guys are, you know, typing in, oh, I can start on this day. Could we work this month through this month, this day through this day? Um, you know, Chris kind of gave you some general guidelines there. And so in the interview process, you know, lay out your, your guys' dates specifically, and they'll be able to, you know, take a look and see if they can plug in with your specific timeframes. But um, that's awesome that you guys have, you know, some good flexibility there. Yeah, it's, and we did, you know, we're definitely looking, you know, for the best, you know, best group of people possible, and we do our best to, you know, accommodate, you know, everyone, you know, and based on their needs, and then not only their, you know, travel needs and their requirements, but you know, then you have to factor in the, you know, the RV as well, and you know, what locations you might have an interest in. So it's, you know, definitely a little jigsaw puzzle going on between us. Yeah, and typically when folks come in, um, they are hired to work at a specific location, and they would stay at that location through their, you know, contracted time. Yes. Cool. Okay. And if folks want to come and work the whole season, is that cool? Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Um, do you guys have any um, other positions available, like through the winter time as well? Uh, not within uh, Yellowstone uh, General Stores, uh, but uh, we do have within you know some of the towns surrounding uh, Yellowstone. We you know we do operate uh, adventure services and hotels, so there will be opportunities within Delaware North uh, for those properties. But but typically in the winter we do have a you know kind of a bare bone crew you know with you know, within within maintenance and a warehouse, but uh, those are very few positions based off West Yellowstone. Sure. Okay. Super. Again, if if you guys are looking for that, you know, something to communicate there during your your interview, just to to see if they can be plugged in anywhere. We do, so, Jody, we do have one store which is open year round, which is Mammoth, and they do. You know, they do have a crew there, uh, but usually we're we're fully staffed. Just to let you know. Sure. Okay. Super. All right. And um, are the stores open on holidays? And if yes, what is the holiday pay? Yes, uh, we are open seven days a week, uh, holidays included, and pay rate I believe is is the same as your regular hourly rate. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, since we're kind of on money here, um, can you please uh, discuss the clinic fee again? Um, is the clinic fee charged if the work camper has health insurance already? And is that fee, um, do they have to do, do they have to do it? Uh, yes, that's part of uh, the National Park Services uh, kind of laws and bylaws. Uh, that's uh, Everyone who works within the park uh, needs mm -hmm. to pay that. That covers a lot of the, you know, kind of the health costs, you know, that are mm -hmm. kind of that go down from the National Park Service, for, you know, to the employees. But you know, the benefits are you do get you know, some clinical services. is by no means a hospital. It's usually typically run by nurses and nurse practitioners. So for you know, more, you know, more immediate and you know, severe medical needs, uh, you would need to, uh, again, go to a, a hospital at, at one of the locations outside of the park. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, th I think, you know, to your point, uh, having your own medical insurance is, you know, probably the best way to go. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Alrighty, and um, let's see. You mentioned before, uh, fifteen dollars per hour is the, you know, the main uh, pay, but there is possibilities of making more. Yes, depend. You know, some some positions, you know, will require. You know, you could be a supervisor or a manager in a certain area, or it could be more physical. Uh, so there will be an increase in pay there. Uh, some of the uh, food service positions, uh, servers within the fountain areas, uh, those are 
tipped position, so there would be a lower, you know, a lower base salary or lower hourly rate, and but you will receive tips. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Alrighty. And um, are you able to go into details about what the completion bonus is? Uh, sure. A uh, completion bonus is uh, if you during the time that you work or the period of time that you work with us. Uh, you receive five dollars for every eight, eight hours worked, and that capped at five hundred dollars, uh, and you receive that you know on your last paycheck. Uh, but you know, remember, you know that's kind of pre-tax, so you know the federal government will take out because it's a bonus. Uh, they will mm -hmm. take out quite a bit of uh, money for you know for taxes. Sure. Okay, alrighty. Uh, let's see here. And so, um, are any of the job positions more outdoors than an indoor position? Uh, within the general stores itself, within the store, uh, those are all, you know, the majority of your time will be spent in the stores. Uh, there are uh, outside, of, you know, out. In our West Yellowstone facility, we do have a warehouse uh, truck drivers. We have our maintenance crew, which you know is required to be outside quite a bit. So, if you did have a you know an interest in an out more outdoor facing position, uh, I would look at either our maintenance positions or our warehouse positions. Sure. Okay. Do any of the positions uh, require a CDL, commercial driver's license? Uh, they do not. They do require a DOT uh, examination, a uh, physical exam. Uh, yep. Okay. As far as the jobs go, uh, they're you know fairly small sized kind of non CDL uh, trucks. Okay. Perfect. And so, uh, do folks get to pick which store they want to work at, or do you guys assign them to a store? Uh, we take both into consideration. Um, you know, yeah. And, and I think you know, past people, you know, past uh, employees with us, you know, have a favorite. So we, you know, they would definitely, you know, we would definitely do our best to put them in that you know location that they prefer. And mm -hmm. but also at the same time, you know, it is based on need as far as you know what stores need to be staffed, and you know at what time of the season you come in as well. So there's kind of a, a variety of factors involved. But again, you know, it's you know, we we definitely work with you. You know, when we you know when we're talking to you as you know what is the preferred location that you'd like to be in. Yeah. And do you guys have a list anywhere of what the 11 stores are? Uh, I could provide that to you, Jody, if you want, and just sure. give you a, a breakdown of each store and the map as well. Okay. All righty. Um, and there, you know, as you look through, you know, ygsjobs.com, like you probably will get a decent idea as well, just looking at the different job listings and stuff. And, you know, you can research the park and learn about the different areas of the park. I'm sure the National Park Service has quite a bit on their website as well, just about the different areas of the park itself. Definitely. Can I quickly add uh, something? Uh, when you apply to the uh, position, uh, one of our pre-screen questions is asking which location you prefer, and it should have all 11 locations listed there too. Cool. Do they have to pick a location in order to proceed through the application? Um, one of the options is uh, like I'm fine with any location, I believe, so they can pick that if they if they want to. Cool. Awesome. All right, good input. Okay, uh, lots of questions here um, about the application process and stuff. So uh, let's let's kind of dive into that. So um, if you'll kind of just hit Chris on uh, what your application process is like, what folks can expect, um, when do you guys start taking applications, etc. Sure. Uh, you know, as far as the application process is, you know, fairly straightforward. Uh, you know, go to one of the websites that was provided, 
uh, submit your information and you know, complete the you know the, the few questions that we have uh, you know, and it's fairly easy questions on just understanding of what you're looking for and you know what your capabilities are and what particular position and then from there you know we're we just we're in the process of just screening individuals and then we will reach out to you uh, to uh, start at least have a first kind of conversation with you with myself or Kayla and you know dive into your background for a few minutes and you know the scope of the role and we go from there okay so it's a, it's a very straightforward you know there's not too many layers of interviews uh that that it takes awesome and yes. kind of what sorry you're fine Kayla, would you like anything else to add to that? Uh, uh, no, uh, that's it's pretty straightforward. And then um, I can talk a little bit more about um, the, I guess, process afterwards. So if you presented an offer, um, there are pre-employment background checks that will be needed to uh, be done, but it will be done closer to your um, start date, uh, about 30 days before. So in the meantime, we just uh, keep in contact and um, if anything changed with dates or anything like that we'll just continue that contact and then get you going um, when you're ready to start awesome Thank you. so folks know pretty quickly you know once you're moving through that application process folks will know pretty quickly whether you know whether or not you guys you know we're happy to hire you if you accept it's not like they're waiting until closer to summer to find out when their start date is and if they even have the job right correct and we're doing our best to you know we understand that you have that you know everyone on this call has options so we you know we definitely understand the urgency to get back to you as soon as possible and you know for you to make a decision as well and and then you know if you do you know get you know, receive a job off offer for us and you accept that you know it's our you know responsibility to have that constant communication with you to prepare you for arrival you know within within west yellowstone awesome okay and so right now like we're recording this webinar it's it's november and i know um you guys basically opened your application process just a couple weeks ago um so folks who are you know considering this maybe for future summer seasons typically your hiring season uh, your, you, you start recruiting for the next summer season, late October, early November. Is that pretty consistent? Uh, yes, all our positions go live November 1st. So we, we have just started uh, you know, uh, the reach outs and kind of reviewing of the applicants you know, in the last few weeks. Sure. And you guys right. typically start with folks who um, they worked for you last summer and said they wanted to come back um, the following summer. So so typically you start going through their process first, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. The, the returners uh, from past years, you know, will, you know, receive priority. And, you know, that's something that we're, you know, we're, we're currently going through. Awesome. Okay, and if there are um, two folks coming, um, do they each need to fill out the application process or just one application for the couple? Uh, yeah, keep them separate, please. Okay, perfect. All righty. And so uh, typically, can you give any kind of time frame as to how prompt are applications addressed with the applicant? Uh, it's definitely, you know, you know, as you know, we, as far as the jobs go, we posted them all November 1st. So there was, you know, quite a few applic applications which came through. So we're working through those right now. And yeah. it's, you know, it's, you know, just because there was a huge volume at first, uh, we're getting through those, uh, but I would say within two weeks, by December 1st, we have, we will have reach out to majority of those individuals that have applied already 
Awesome. Okay, very cool. And uh, just it uh, sounds like a couple folks maybe haven't seen the slides, but uh, the website to apply is dn.careers slash YGS. That's D is in Delaware, N is in North dot careers forward slash YGS, Yellowstone General Stores. Um, so that's the website y'all can go to um, to start that application process. Uh, we also have Chris and Kayla's uh, email addresses available here on the screen. So Chris's email is cwade, C-W-A-D-E, at DelawareNorth.com. Uh, or Kayla's email is kclark, K-C-L-A-R-K, number one, at DelawareNorth.com. Uh, so that's how you guys can get in touch with uh, Chris or Kayla if you have some more specific questions or hop on the website to get your application started and going. Um, all right here, uh, we've really worked through quite a few questions. Um, we're starting to get some repeated questions coming in here. So you guys, if we've already addressed some of these things, uh, we're already over an hour, so we're not gonna keep hitting on the same questions. We are recording this webinar. An email will go out to everyone who registered with the link to the webinar and some other goodies. Um, and the recording will be on the Work Camper News YouTube channel as well. Um, so you'll be able to check that out anytime. Um, all right, so uh, let's get into some weather. We had a couple questions about weather, how hot, how cold. Uh, will there be snow if folks arrive early in the season? So um, talk a little bit about what they can experience there. Sure. Uh, this see, currently the weather outside, you know, on, you know, in November right now, it's, you know, it's mm -hmm. probably 50 degrees, high 40s. Uh, but we're getting snow, you know, the, we're moving into our snow season and snow is going to continue in Yellowstone and, you know, Yellowstone's closed for the winter and mm -hmm. only snowmobiles are allowed, you know, within the park in during winter time and guided. Uh, and our stores, open up you know mid mid april and you know the snow will be melting then you know the bears will be coming out looking for food and mm -hmm. all the animals will start moving around again and the weather you know will you know it will fluctuate you will have snowstorms still coming in april and you can receive snow in july so you know be prepared you know i, I it's similar to you know when you're hiking bring layers you know, mm -hmm. you could be in shorts, you could be in shorts one day, and you could be, you know, in a down hoodie the next day. So it's you know, and you, you might have a foot of snow. But you know, <laughs> as you get as you get into the summer, you know, kind of months, you know, temperatures, you know, we are at you know, we are at six, seven, eight thousand feet. So you know, you're gonna have temperatures June, July, August you know, in the 70s and, you know, mid 80s, but being a mountain town, they will drop, or a mountain area, it will drop at night. So it could get, you know, into the 40s as well. So no, you know, you don't, you know, there's no air conditioning at any of the dorms within the park. Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely will you need air conditioning or, or even heating for that matter, but definitely bring layers of clothes. I think that's the best way to go. Sure, absolutely. And if folks do come earlier, you know, in that April time frame, um, does the park service get the snow cleared off of the RV sites? Uh, yes, I believe so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, you know, something that, you know, they, they're preparing not only the roads, but the RV sites as well. Yeah. So that's why, you know, depending on the location, that's why we stagger uh, the opens of particular stores based on, you know, the clear and activities of the park service. Sure. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, in general, how many folks are you guys looking to hire? A typical season can you know, be between say three and 400 individuals, uh, you know, based on, you know, you know the, as factoring in the 11 stores as well as the support uh, warehouse and maintenance and HR and accounting uh, based out of West Yellowstone. Awesome. 
And, and something else that's cool, you know, there are other concessionaires operating in the national park. So, um, you know, work campers will be able to engage with not just fellow Delaware North employees, but, you know, other workers that are there working, you know, for the other concessionaires in the park. So uh, it really becomes quite the community in the summer. I know, you know, the relationships that folks build is one of those very valued intangible benefits that folks have from this type yeah. of opportunity. Definitely, Jody, and you know the the you know RV areas uh, sites are away from all the tourist areas, so you do have that community there. You know, you yeah. will have cookouts, you will have you know there's even small pubs and you know com community areas for all the concessionaries in the area. So you get to not only build relationships within you know Yellowstone General Stores, but and Delaware North, but you know other other groups of employees from other areas too as well as the national park service you know kind of rangers and support yeah wow that's cool uh all right a couple other kind of random questions here and then we're going to wrap things up um all right if folks have uh maybe a little bit of a physical disability uh like this work camper specifically you know uses a walker to get around um are there accommodations that delaware north available um is is available to make to kind of you know allow for some of that uh yes i mean definitely we're definitely you know look into that and you know uh, based on the you know looking at the, a particular store to put you in and a, a particular position but that's mm -hmm. you know feel free to you know have those conversations with the recruiter and yeah. and again you know although you know some of our dorm areas and you know our stores are you know fairly antiquated at times. So it's, again, just trying to understand what your needs are and seeing how we can meet them. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely want to be clear and forthcoming in your interview, you guys. Okay, uh, folks, okay. Um, so, uh, all right, this person worked for you guys in 2022. Do they need to submit another application if they want to work for you in 2024? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Um, go, go ahead. ahead. If you got more. No, no, no. no I was saying <laughs> if, if you want, you can definitely reach out to me directly uh, via the email, and I can you know you know have a conversation with our HR team as well, and you know, see if you know then pull up your information from Pat the past as well. But it definitely doesn't hurt to submit another resume or another application. Awesome. Okay, great. And if folks are working in the warehouse outside of West Yellowstone, are there um, any dining discount options? There are not. not. No, yeah. Okay. We're away from uh, yeah all of the dining uh, areas. It's about a forty-five minute drive to Old Faithful, which is the closest store. So, okay. but we do have. You know, West Yellowstone has a you know abundance of uh, restaurants in the area and grocery stores. And mm -hmm. and one thing I would also add is, uh, within if you do apply for a position in the warehouse, uh, you do need uh, st uh, you know steel tip shoes there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good thing to know. All right. Uh, where are folks able to get packages delivered? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, as far as what happens is, you know, you'll be provided with a, a address, and if they're you know packages from Amazon or anywhere online or personal packages, they come to our facilities in in West Yellowstone, and they make uh, the, the drivers here will make daily trips out to the individual stores. That's cool. Okay, good little system there. And if folks want to do the PO boxes at the different little um, postal facilities at the different locations, that would just be for normal mail, not probably not packages. Yes, correct. Cool. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. A specific question about being in the um, RV site area. Uh, these folks are wondering if an IGBC certified cooler is allowed. 
that's a very specific question. I don't. If I knew what that meant, I would I would right. say I would answer <laughs> that, but I have no idea what what that means. Yeah, maybe it's like an external cooler freezer thing that they have because you know it, some folks may not have refrigerators in their RV, so maybe they have like a super fancy cooler kind of thing that they keep their food in. So um, again, that's it, something specific. You guys can um, talk to the Delaware North team about. They can look into that more specifically. Uh, and I, I, it's you know it is bear country here and. I have seen cars broken into by bears and I've seen coolers broken into by bears. So, you know, when in doubt, you know, kind of put everything within your RV because bears are very up, you know, they love food and they've got good, they have a very good sense of smell and they're very strong. So, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> All right, uh, let's throw this out here as the last question, Chris. Uh, this person is asking about age restrictions, and uh, I guess that could go either way. So, so let's let's take this both ways. Is there any age restrictions for the humans working for Delaware North, and is there any age restrictions on RVs in the RV sites? Uh, age for humans is. Uh... Eight, you know, 18 minimum, and then all the way up. You know, we have in, individuals last season that were in their mid 80s working with us as well. So we have the whole range there, and everything in between. And as far as uh, campers go, age-wise, uh, we have not, we do not have any, uh, kind of, you know, kind of uh, limitations yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Super. All right. Oh, and um, the work camper wrote in just in case anyone was wondering. IGBC coolers are bear safe coolers certified by the Interagency Grizzly Bear Committee, which is actually there in West Yellowstone at the Discovery Center. So there we go. We've all learned a little bit more about coolers today. Oh, excellent. Thanks for yeah. the information. That's cool. Who knew? Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, we have done it. We have um, gotten through uh, all the questions. Again, if, if there were a few questions that were just repeats, uh, go back and listen to the recording of this, you guys, and that'll you know kind of rehash a lot of different things for you. Um, we'll get that recording out uh, later today. And uh, Chris, Kayla, you guys have been a wealth of information. Uh, you've done a great job covering a lot of bases for work campers to help them better decide if they think this opportunity is going to be right for them or not. So we really appreciate your willingness um, and time that you're taking here to uh, provide all of this great input. So um, is there anything else, Chris or Kayla, that you guys would like to throw out? Kayla, anything on your end? Sorry, I keep trying to unmute. Um, just uh, like if there's any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us directly. Um, we want to accommodate as much as we can. And if we don't know the answer, we'll definitely find out and get back to you. Uh, but yeah, all of the recs, uh, the positions are open. So go ahead out and apply. We're going through them now and we will be reaching out to people like Chris said uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and keep that communication going and uh and yeah but we're excited for the new season so if there's any questions just feel free to reach out and yeah as far as yeah if you want you know kind of one of the most amazing experiences of your life and you want to work at the same time and wake up and fall asleep in you know one of the most beautiful parks in the world you know definitely you know start the application process and uh you know, we'd do our best to hopefully have you here, you know, next summer. Wonderful. All right. I'm 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 ready to sign up. <laughs> oh, this was so great. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, so much for listening into the webinar today. Um, like I said, we really appreciate the Delaware North team and 
Uh, just from my own personal experience here at Work Camper News, we've been partners with Delaware North for over 20 years now, and it's just been a pleasure to work with them all this time. Um, I think they have a, a great program, and if you know everything is sounding good to you, you know they're gonna they're gonna try hard to um, make make this a good experience for you guys. So uh, definitely look into it further, and hopefully Yellowstone will be in your future. So uh, thanks to everyone out there, uh, Chris and Kayla. Thanks again, and uh, we wish you all safe travel and happy work camping. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Jody.